And as co-host, I am now extremely excited to introduce Courtney Bates Hardy uh, to read from her latest collection. She is the author of Anatomical Venus, which was published by Radiant Press just this year, 2024, House of Mystery by Chai Zine Publications, and a chapbook Seafoam from Jack Pine Press in 2013. Her poems have been featured in Best Canadian Poetry, Vallum, Event, among others. She's queer, disabled, and one-third of a writing group called The Pain Poets. Welcome, Courtney. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Holly. Um, so I'm going to read a poem from my new collection, Anatomical Venus, which I just got copies of over the weekend. I'm really excited. Um, it's a beautiful book, and my publisher did an amazing job. Um, so the reason it's called Anatomical Venus is because it's named after a wax anatomical model that was created in the 18th century uh, in Italy. And an anatomical Venus is a really beautiful figure of a woman made out of wax. And they were fully dissectable. So you could lift up the abdominal wall, you could see all of the organs and lift them out individually. And they were used to study anatomy before refrigerators existed. Um, and when I started writing poems for Anatomical Venus, I didn't know like why these figures fascinated me so much. It took me a really long time before I realized that I deeply related to the Anatomical Venus because I've been in multiple car accidents, um, which injured my neck and some of the nerves in my neck and shoulder. So I experience chronic nerve pain. And so the anatomical Venus is this sort of like outward um, expression of what most people can't see about me. Um, that they are this figure that sort of embodies that contradiction of like, they're created to look beautiful, but they also represent death. Um, and the poem I'm going to read is about, um, a woman who was an anatomist in the 18th century. Um, I came across her work with wax anatomical models, um, while I was doing research for the collection and she mainly recreated body parts in wax, like, uh, ears, hands, eyes. So all kind of like individual body parts um, rather than an entire body like the anatomical Venus. And she had a really fascinating life. And she also represented this incredible independence at a time when it was really unusual for women to be working as scientists or anatomists. Um, and even after her husband died, uh, she still continued working as an anatomist and she lectured on anatomy at the University of Bologna for um, quite a long time. So writing about her really provided me this way to kind of have a counterpoint to the anatomical Venus, which are these really erotic and vulnerable figures of women, whereas um, this lady anatomist um, used her artistic and scientific skill to explore death and recreate parts of the body. And she's even credited with discovering previously unknown body parts. So uh, I called the poem uh, The Lady Anatomist. She sharpens her tools, dips her scalpel, bears down on the saw. Here, let me pull back the skin to better display the brain. She can unmake your body, then remake it entirely, an eye, an ear, a hand. She looks on death and takes her measurements, lifts her forceps, makes her notes, heats the wax, colors it pink, and molds it to her specifications. She will not lie on this table to be taken by feminine rapture. She will not settle for one string of pearls when she could have the whole colon. She gave up her child, 
and guided her husband to his grave. She will not take your false titles. She is no mother, no doctor, no saint. She alone touches the cadaver. She will not be shamed for her work, nor praised. Thank you.